stock market is soaring. Are you missing out? It may not be too late to make some money. Following health care on Capitol Hill, there's this bill and that bill. But are any of the bills actually going anywhere? And what it all could mean for you? And the big fight to claw back big bonus money from companies who took big bailout money from you, the taxpayer. It's time to talk your money. Hello and welcome to Your Money. I'm Ali Velshi. Christine Romans is off this week. The Dow crossed 10,000, another milestone in an already incredible rally. Back in March, with the Dow around 6,500, even the most optimistic among us may have forecasted a run of 15, 20, maybe 30 percent. Nine months later, this rally is more than 50 percent. In a moment, we'll let our money gang determine what this means for the direction of the country. Remember, unemployment is soaring at the same time. But first, a rally like this, folks say it can't stay at this pace. I implore you, go online, look at your money, talk to a financial advisor. We're going to look right at your portfolio right now with our own financial planner and figure out if it's time to cash in some of your savings. Doug Flynn is a certified financial planner, the founder of Flynn Zito Capital Management, a good friend of ours. Doug, you've had the calls. I've had them from people this week. Uh, people are looking at this 10000 It's caused them to look at their investments and say, what do I do now? So let's look at the scenarios about who you are and what you should do right now. If you think you've made a lot of money, you're enjoying it, and you want to keep on making money, you're optimistic, what do you do with your money? Well, if you're optimistic and your allocation has gotten a little bit ahead of itself, meaning you, you had a certain amount of, of money in the stock market or in, in equities in your 401k or your own money, uh, it's probably a larger percentage in there now. So, so let's, you say you, 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 let's say back in March it was 50-50. You had 50% in stocks, 50% in bonds. Whatever your allocation sure. is, now what has happened to this 50-50? Right. If this was at the low, it, but doing nothing, yeah. you're automatically now up to 60% uh, in stocks and 40% in bonds. So that allocation has just shifted by itself from 50-50 to 60-40. Right, let's take a look at that. You've got, so you, you had a 50-50 portfolio. Now it looks more like that, 60-40. What happens? You think you've done well. You're looking at your 401k. You're happy. You finally got a gain. Do you go back to the 50-50? Do you rebalance? Because that's kind of the traditional thinking on this. It is. The question is that now people are feeling a little better about themselves yeah. and feeling better about the market. So they think, you know what? I might want to let that ride. Yeah. The problem with that is if you do have another downturn, now you have more in the market than you originally were comfortable right. with. It doesn't matter where you began, but you're out of whack right now. Okay. So typically what you want to do, if you're feeling optimistic, you might let it ride, but you want to know that that is where you are. You, you need to accept that's where you are, that you're going to be 60% in stock. You might tweak it, though, with what you've got in those stocks. We think of stocks as some monolith. That's true. So hopefully, you've got five or six mutual funds that make up that 60% of your portfolio. Exactly. And hopefully, hopefully they're not all the same type of mutual funds. Right. You have really good diversification inside of there. All right. So you can let it go if you're feeling very good about the if market. If you're not, there are a whole lot of people saying, oh, my God, more than a 50% run in six months, in nine months. That is, that's epic. You're just not going to see that kind of thing continue for a while. People are worried this market's going to come back down. So now you've, mm -hmm. you've evolved to the 60-40. But, but you're not comfortable. No, then this is a perfect time to rebalance and go back to your original allocation. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. I mean, this, this kind of thing, uh, uh, rebalancing on an annual basis, what it does for you over the long term is it takes away the idea of having to figure out when to buy and when to sell. You're automatically rebalancing at a good time in the market. And that means selling some of those things that have done well and going back into some of those things that are That's lower. right. And rebalancing over the very long haul can add about 1% to your average annual return in your portfolio over time. Because you're not thinking. You're not saying, you know, is now a good time. You're just doing it on a systematic basis. But it begins with knowing exactly what your true allocation should be from the beginning. And if you're a little out of whack and you're a little uncomfortable, Now's the time to bring it down and forget about it. Review it again in 6 or 12 months and keep rebalancing. It will bring some additional value in return. Doug, you always make it easy with the pie charts. Thank you so much. Good advice. People should talk to a pers personal financial planner. Go on the Internet. Take a look. Just know what you're doing. Even if you do nothing, know what's going on. But the issue is, do we care? This Dow's at 10,000. It's just a number, Pat. Uh, do we care? Does this, is this a signal that things are going to be okay? No, it's a, it's, it's, it's a milestone that we set arbitrarily, something to celebrate uh, as you can look at it and say that we've, we've hit 10,000, but we, we've done this before and gone back down. It moves both ways. Pat Kieran, an anchor with New York One. Hal Sparks is a comedian, uh, and, and really, we've needed comedians. I, I think so. Thing. Yeah, yeah. I've, it, I've been in a growth industry for yeah. the last year. I have not been affected by the recession at all because I've had people weeping before shows and sure. laughing afterwards. So, And, you know, I guess I belong here. I bought Apple at 14, and it's doing fairly well. <laughs> there you go. Are you, are you one of these people who sees it as a sunny future, or you think Storm Park's on the horizon? Uh, no, I mean, I think, I think when, you, you know, the, the nation has a long way to go. I, I think we're going to shift from a manufacturing base to 
a more intellectual-based economy, no question. I don't think they're going to be tankers full of jeans shipping from the United States to other countries anytime soon. But I do think um, we have a lot there. Uh, most of the best companies are founded and, and fomented right here in the States, yeah. and I think that's really our future. How so do we build on yeah. that, and how do we keep that going? Exactly. We're going to talk more about this through the, through the show. Stephen A. Smith, journalist and commentator, what are your thoughts? Well, I'm a practical guy. I'm thinking about dollars and cents. Mm -hmm. 10000 that's real nice. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, most Americans don't understand it, could care less. Mm -hmm. What they want is a job. They want to mm -hmm. make sure they have money mm -hmm. so, but to spend rather than telling me what the value of my dollar is. Right. These are the kind of things that American citizens are thinking about, yeah. especially in this day and time when you've lost in excess of seven a million jobs. That's just yep. the way we look at and it. And you're absolutely right. Of the legs of the economy that matter most to people, having a job and having an income is the most important. I agree with you. There are a lot of people who aren't entirely sure why they should care, particularly about the dollar. It's been in the news. A dollar's a dollar, right? Well, wrong. Why you should care about the dollar, I'm going to make Stephen care about the dollar <laughs> when we come back.